Hello everyone, hi there. Thank you for coming in. <laughs> Hello. Hi Claire. Welcome. So I'll just give a few minutes, one or two minutes to let a little bit, a uh, few more people come in and then we can start. And um, today we're gonna do the group, um, this group, uh, group six with the X, Q, U and Y. And they have the similarity here as you can see is the, um, this is an indirect oval. So we're gonna learn about all these, okay? So if you're writing with me, hopefully you have a guide paper. Um, and it's always useful to have a guide because um, otherwise it's hard to figure out all the portion. And if you're new to uh, calligraphy, I can explain a little bit more. So let me bring out. So. The reason I'm doing all these um, live demo is because I'm also trying to promote um, this copy sheets that I have because you can uh, practice with them. Uh, it comes in a whole pack with all the alphabets that uh, I'm teaching through the live demo and you can see like the whole page is printed and inside there's uh, printed with some exemplar like this. Okay, this is the exemplar. I'll do a vertical version so you can see it shows the different groups and then the, um, inside a pack you also get a normal sequence so lots of practices uh, practice pages I'm actually working on all the nooks as well so you can see that I have these nooks that I will use it later so with all the point form it's very detailedly right written I'm actually trying to update all the information and make sure it's easy to understand so that they will be available for download as a study pack uh, later later on i think it should be available maybe next week yeah so keep an eye on my ig if you're interested to um, download them now let's start let's begin so i'm using um, a plain um, a plain guideline with two pieces of cushion paper so just blank paper and I like to use the magnet that I designed um, to clip it on both sides so you can see this is how I set up okay so you have the writing page and then two pieces of cushion paper just plain paper okay and I'm using a Microsoft pen holder and also um, I'm using some water ink. I like to use this is actually an ink stirrer and <laughs> instead of turning it on I put a big chunk of blue tack so that the ink is tilted and it's easier for me to get the ink. Cool. So let's kick start. Now in this group we have the alphabet X uh, Q U and Y but before that I want to explain uh, why there's a similarity in this group so first of all in this group you will see that the similarity is the indirect oval entry so you look at this this is an indirect oval so indirect oval means it's going um, clockwise direction so indirect is a clockwise movement so this is the oval which is in a clockwise movement Again, similarly here, and for the U, okay, and as well as the Y. Now, there are differences in X, Q, U, and Y, because you notice that for the first indirect um, oval entry, um, you can see the X, the difference is it's coming all the way down into a larger oval. Then it becomes, um, then you finish off with a ball terminal, right? So this movement is coming down, up, and down, like that. Same as the Q, you will notice it's a similar movement. So we'll start from going down in the first oval, 
coming up when you reach up it would hit it would touch the ascender two line so the top ascender line and you're coming down slowly adding more pressure okay so this movement is the same as here now u and y has a different um uh second part so the first part remain exactly the same you will notice that you have the indirect oval coming down going up relax this will touch the ascender two line and then you come down now this time instead of doing an oval into we will go down straight down on the 55 degree slant into a sh um, what we call is like a shaded downstroke so shaded means there's uh, you put pressure on your index finger so it's a shaded downstroke like that now the rest we will talk about it later but you see the y is the same so you have the same indirect oval coming up touching the ascender two line and then you do exactly the same you coming down on the 55 degree slant um, in a shaded down stroke and then you lift okay so technically this and this is exactly the same but notice that for letter u is a longer coming all the way down to around this area and y will be um, slightly above the waistline okay so we're going to talk about these two now um, so what we just did is you can you can practice this separately as well so we have um, in a guideline if you usually see is there's five bars right so three four five and the five bars what it means is th this area is your x height and then you will have the waistline here this is the a1 ascender one ascender means anything above the x height so this is a2 this line is your baseline baseline which is like the ground level and anything below the baseline is descender d1 and d2 okay so i'm just quickly uh showing it now we can practice this is first of all let me tilt the paper now what we do is you can practice creating that um, indirect oval entry okay now the first one let me do again so you want to start with no pressure meaning you start with a hairline coming down add some pressure up relax And you notice that as I'm reaching up here, this point is touching the ascender two line. Now this is leading into the second oval, right? So you want to make sure that the shade, the thick, the thickest area is here and here. So the thickest area, the thickest shade it's from thin thicker and back to thin okay so i use the dot to represent then you come up the oval touch the ascender to line then you come down curving now notice this is the heaviest um the, um, the thickest here so again you have gradation of pressure so thin and then thick back to thin now obviously it's a little bit thicker here so you can add a little bit more dot to represent okay so practice this this is the first um indirect oval entry for the letter x and q so we'll practice a few more times okay kind of like a japanese um character okay and when you do this sorry now when you do this one thing we need to pay attention is the distance now notice this is parallel spacing so meaning this 
and this line are parallel to each other and if you've been joining uh, my live demo um, I like to say this is like a train track um, train track represent um, so train track because it looks like train tracks right and it's parallel spacing basically it's parallel spacing okay so when I say train tracks it means parallel spacing okay now let's zoom out a little bit so let's try to do the Q Now, when I come down this time, I will touch the baseline and then coming up and make a very flat horizontal loop here and I will lift. When the two lines are crossing, I'll lift my pen and then I will remind myself to come out like um, this is an S curve. So you come out like a an S curve. Sorry, this is a little bit... <laughs> not so smooth we'll write it again later now then what you want to do is you want to slant the page a little bit you move your nib and add a shade this is a synthetic shade okay one more time I'll focus on the writing first lift curve out then you slant the page and put your nib press very lightly now this synthetic shade basically is sitting on top of the line so if you imagine um if you have The synthetic shade basically is resting here, okay, on top of that uh, hairline. Now, this letter um, Q, so letter Q looks like um, number two, right? So it looks like number two. There are other ways to write it if you prefer another method, but this is a quite traditional method to use it. Uh, I would say personally, if you use it, if it's a postcode, it can be potentially a bit dangerous because it could read as a number. Um, so later I'll talk about the second method to write that. But for this letter Q, um, what I want to mention, some important information as well, is you notice that um, this oval, it's angling different from the slant because with the slant we have we're using the 55 degree slant ruler okay so this is on the slant and this is slightly off slant okay so this oval is angled this way similar to last time if you followed me uh, uh, if you watched the um, p b and r um, the indirect oval also have the same characteristics all right now for for this cue it's rather simple i want to demonstrate one more time and this entrance uh indirect entrance oval lift now instead of moving the paper and i shifted my my nip 
sometimes if you notice this is not very um it's not very sharp right you, what you can do is add a very thin hairline like that just a very light touch okay um what was i going to say yes what i want to mention is you kind of want to aim to have this this oval a little bit smaller so this idea is if you have this two line it is in the center okay so you want to aim the oval more at the center so i should have done it a little bit smaller like that so you want it to be about the middle approximately like around the middle okay a little bit going below uh, the middle um, between so this is actually the uh, the A1 and the W so this is your ascender one right and this is your waistline so you can have this middle line if it's slightly going underneath it's all right it's just, this is a little bit too much so you want it to be a smaller oval compared to the uh, p b and um, r from last time because last time we had it a little bit larger if you remember so let's shift the camera So that was the P and this oval again similarly it's angle out but this is taking a little bit more space it's a bit bigger okay now I'll mention there's another cue right so the another cue that we have it starts like a letter O actually it will appear in um it will appear in the group eight so in two weeks time you learn the letter o so let's see you start from here okay so that's an o That's another way to write the Q. So what you do is you start from here, come down, coming up forward, following oval, and then down again, and lift. You want to have this line extend and bring it in. Then you want this. Now notice my nib now is pointing this way so that when I come down to do the uh, finishing line for the letter Q, it's angled um, to the left. So the nib will open. Okay, like that. So this is also a traditional O. So, so sorry, this connection is not very good. Um, I will try to focus one more time. <laughs> the connection is still an issue. Manipulate your nip. It's a little bit better. 
Um, the other day I thinking it looks like Tintin. <laughs> cool. So you can use this cue if you um, struggle with number two as a you know uh, use it as a postcode because I think it's very easy to mis misread as a number two. Okay, so you can use this cue instead. Now let's continue with the next one. Is so we start with again the same thing. You have. This is for the X. So you want to start with the indirect oval entry. You come down, up. As you're reaching up, make sure you're touching the ascender to line. Um, and then you keep going down um, in a clockwise movement, adding pressure in the center, coming down, and then bring up the ball terminal and press in the ink. Now with the X, you want to then do the right side. It starts from the the ascender line and come down without adding pressure come up and do a smaller oval what we then do is we add a synthetic shade on the right hand side of the um, right hand side of this small oval like that now then you come back up here and draw the ball terminal. Notice that this ball terminal, this ball terminal is not dangling too low, okay? It is quite close to um, the ascender to line, the top ascender. And then we do the same, you press in the ink. So I repeat one more time. press and then you want to come down in a light pressure or actually no pressure and you add the synthetic shade and then you want to extend from this so when I say extend it's uh, more about retracing so you want to come from here retrace the hairline to the right curve a little bit move a tiny tiny um uh, ball terminal so the shape of this ball terminal should balance to this and then add the pressure now notice that in the x you want to have the oval the few ovals so you have this oval the first oval and then it get into a larger oval okay this is the larger oval now this oval here Sorry, it's slightly off. Should be more curved in here. Okay, this oval, it's slender. Um, so it's a little bit skinnier. It's more slim on the right hand side. Now you probably are wondering why when I come down, I'm not adding pressure. It's just slightly breaking the rule because if you can imagine, uh, if this is a big wet puddle of ink, if you're coming down here with lots of ink, um, it's gonna be like uh, exploding with <laughs> with ink. So um, let's try. Okay, I'm just experimenting with the camera again. All right. You press. Then you want to start and lift at the synthetic shade on the right hand side, very thin shade. Then you come up, extending up, draw a ball terminal and press. Okay, so this is the letter X. That looks like a butterfly really looks like a butterfly isn't it 
You can then add the hidden body. <laughs> A lot of uh, <laughs> body of the butterfly. It's quite fun when you um, figure out, think about shapes. Now, obviously, you can see this is parallel. So make sure this spacing it's parallel. So you don't want it to be like um, sometimes too close or too far away. You know, you just want to keep it parallel. All right. Now I just cover quite quickly um, two alphabet, which is great. Now I want to do the th third one. So remember we talked about the indirect oval entry. There are two options, right? The first one was going, oops, the first one was going, coming down like that, like a ch Japanese So you can practice on its own. Okay. Now the second one is like that. So notice that instead of coming into another oval this time you want to come down on the 55 degree slant all right this might be a little bit too close so let's start again wait okay so this is a better better one because I want the space to be a little bit more open not too close to each other so this is um, coming all the way down to 55 degrees line so if you think about letter U so we have then you lift okay come up now when you come up, you want to touch, go all the way above um, the waistline. You want to come up quite high up and then you want to do the uh, flat top so you can draw a line, come down and lift and go up. This is slightly off slant, do you notice? Right, so let's try again. So you lift here. Notice that I cut down the pressure quite uh, in advance. So about here, I start to cut down the pressure so that when I reach here, you see it's a point. Now then I do the hair uh, connective. Uh, this is called a connective hairline. So you come up and it will be between the ascender. So it's about here. You want to reach about where the ascender one and the waistline is, so in the middle, okay? About here. It's okay if it's slightly higher, a little bit shorter, because we are going to come down with a um, with a downstroke, right? With a shaded downstroke. Now this shaded downstroke will be placed in between uh, the A2 and the A1 line, so about here. And you want to draw a line, press, come down, lift and come up okay i don't know why i'm slightly off slant today let's try okay now what 
this is a little bit better. Now, what you need to pay attention. So first of all, you come down indirect oval. So this is a clockwise movement. You starting with a hairline, adding pressure here more. So this is the thickest point. Then back to a thin hairline coming up, continuing the small oval. And as you reach the top, this is the top, you then curve down. Now, when you curve down, notice this is on the 55 degree slant. You should be able to see a little triangle, which is the negative space. Um, because if you don't see, that means you are turning a little bit too much, okay? Um, coming down straight. When I say straight, that means it's completely parallel. 55 degrees slant coming down and then you can lift um, uh, a little bit earlier so when when you do this I think about a triangle here at the top of this triangle you are already reducing the pressure so that when you reduce the pressure your nip will start to close back to a point so it should hit back to a point um, before the baseline and then you want to come up a hairline that come up now notice that I come up quite high I mentioned it's about um, this point okay so the line should come up about here now because it's closed uh, it's covered sorry it's covered by the the downstroke here so you can't see um, but it's really helpful if you bring it higher so that you can aim to go down uh, you know on the same plane on the same slant because if you make it too short sometimes it's really hard to judge where your nip should be placed i will show you later in um in the with the incorrect way okay now you come down and it's a full pressure stroke so this stroke is created by you can have uh, some nip manipulation so first you can what well, the first method is drawing a line to the right coming back and press one more time, draw a line, come back and press. So the idea is you draw out that lovely flat top at the beginning. Okay. Or you can rotate your nip a little bit so that the nip open, uh, the left tine opens and come down. I'm pressing quite hard okay so you can create a flat top with two method now of course you can touch up you can even draw a seven like a, a number seven at the corner to make it a little bit sharper so let me try this is method one talking doesn't <laughs> doesn't really help so That's number one. Your nip rotate, manipulate by rotating with your finger a little bit to your right. It will open and come down. Touch up. Notice this is heavier than that. Um, I'm more of a t uh, using this technique the number one technique so when I do this I get a little bit nervous and I add more pressure okay but try both and see which one helps you um, now we were saying about the letter U so you want to come up connect your hairline quite long quite high up so that you can have a guideline to come down and lift your pen and you come up again now notice this this space it's matching here so you want to contain the same amount of liquid or whatever it's inside or rice <laughs> so you want it to be the same okay so technically if we cover that so let's see if we cover it
okay and you should have the same spacing now let's do one more time so I won't talk I'll focus on my writing lift come up higher so that you have a guideline you find the midpoint draw a line come down come up touch up if needed to make it a bit sharper you see i did a little bit too much now i have to make this whole line a bit risky Okay, <laughs> I, I try to draw, uh, touch up the number seven at the corner here, and it becomes a little bit uh, over, the ink was over over the line, so I have to fill in the whole, the whole shade. But it's still okay, I think. Um, I'll try one more time. If you bring this line quite higher up, you also find that little triangle here. That's a negative space. So this is your oval. This is your oval. Sharp corner. Like that. So what not to do for letter U? So I've been teaching in-person workshop for quite some time and for my classes in-person workshop um, students can send me the homework and I can uh, put some remark and a lot of the times people tend to write um, you like this so this is the incorrect way Okay, it's quite obvious. This is like a big swoop like that. Now, if you're doing modern calligraphy, try to really avoid that because in the Roman capital, the U is, wasn't curly, okay? It was, um, I don't have the Roman capital um, paper with me today, but it is supposed to be just two straight line, right? So it's not, going to be curly like that so you want to really the first thing when you come down first thing you remind yourself is come down on the slant and lift earlier or reduce the pressure earlier so you have this point where you can come up and out okay um what is also not good to do is if you tr write Oops, there's some paper fiber, can you see? Doesn't focus, yes This, please remove it And I usually grab a piece of tissue Oh, it's here. It's on the floor. So I use these um, kitchen towel from Scott, the brand, the um, Scott S C O T T. Um, it is lint free, so you can clean it multiple times. It doesn't catch any paper fiber, which is great. Okay. This is one more time. come up now this time what happened is some calligraphers
make it very high up okay now you can see maybe you can compare this and this do you notice it's very different okay because this is a lot higher this is touching all the way to the ascender to and it looks like it's very stuffy it's like no open air you know this is like the wind can blow through sorry the wind is <laughs> badly drawn but the idea is if you keep it open it looks a lot nicer and make sure it's parallel so this and this is parallel to each other um, when I meant the train track the parallel spacing here so what is what you want to avoid doing let's do a bad example let's see well this is very clearly very narrow so you can see it's not much um, uh, openness so this is a bad example let me try I want to do like a in parallel. Sometimes it's quite hard to create those because once you have break the, you know, you have break the the bad habit, it doesn't come back. So, which is a good sign. What about oh, the lip is shifting? Maybe. So this is clearly bad because it's so wide and then this is also curvy okay so <laughs> what I'm trying to say is keeping this nice and parallel okay cool now let's do I have to change the paper now let's do letter why? So about me, I'm changing the page. Now, if you have any questions, please let me know. I am trying to look at the messages as well. How are you guys doing? In Hong Kong, um, our current situation of the virus, there's not a lot of local cases. I actually stopped paying attention to it. Um, we just travel around with wearing masks. Um, a lot of things are back to normal. We are currently allowing eight people in the public. Um, but a lot of people are in and out. Um, so I hope wherever you are, it's getting good. <laughs> okay. Now, I'm going to do the next one. It's the letter Y. So we start also with the indirect oval entry. So what we want to do this time is we want to shorten um, the downstroke, the shaded stroke here. We do exactly the same thing. So you want to have the indirect oval so moving clockwise when the nib is here you want to press a little bit harder so it has the the most shade then it becomes light thin hairline again you come up reach to the ascender two line and then you immediately coming down now after turning what i always imagine is that it's a slant and i should be able to see that triangle immediately you come down now notice the why we don't go all the way down to the baseline we actually stop um, above the waistline here so just above the waistline and you want to connect it again we have a, a very light uh, kind of a, we call this like a right curve going upwards and then you want to do the uh, line of universal beauty um, so, if you remember the line of universal beauty, basically you start like this, thin, thicker, back to thin, 
okay and you want to curve when you draw the ball terminal you can use this as a guide reference okay so it is in between these two shade that you finish the ball kind of like draw the ball terminal okay so i'll do one more time you see this time i draw it much narrower i want you to compare the difference okay now both of them are acceptable some people might have a larger oval when you're writing um, your script style you may have a bigger oval some of you may have a little bit narrower oval um, in in a way all you need to make sure is every single alphabet have about uh, the same size of oval as a, as your standard okay now this one also look a little bit wider is because the slant here is more angle out do you see so that makes the y um looks a little bit wider the first one is wider than the second i like the second one more one more lift come up now you want to start the line uh, the line of universal beauty approximately in the middle here okay so in between the ascender 2 and ascender 1 you want to start here again you don't want to touch all the way to the top i think the the, the reason is the same as the u um, it kind of blocks the the wind so it's not as open and it doesn't feel as um as pretty so i can do one right next to it to show you Okay, do you see the difference? Sorry for this, but this is more kind of, I prefer this one. Okay, so please make it a little bit lower, approximately the middle point between A2 and A1, the ascender area. All right, now, So what I'm gonna do, wow, I'm amazed that I'm covering this quite fast. Are there any questions at all? So I guess actually this group is quite easy. It's not that difficult. Do you think? Just going through, if anyone have a question, just let me know. Hmm. Okay, so now what we try to do is we do a quick summary every time I do this. And at the same time, I have printed out this page. Now, the coming up study um, pack that is available for download will have this. I think it's very useful, especially when you're practicing. Sometimes it's not just so much about like writing, writing, writing. Sometimes it's also very useful if you think about um, the details, like almost kind of trying to memorize the details, but I don't want you to like just force yourself to memorize it, but you kind of try to truly understand it. So um, I'm gonna use this um, to show you we actually did that last week, right? So let's look at the first two um, here. So I will show you with the nib with no ink. Now, the indirect oval entry 
starts always with the hairline. You always have a point that you don't add pressure at the beginning. And then you move clockwise, downward movement. So when you're moving clockwise, you're coming down, slowly adding pressure. At this point, it should be the heaviest in this area, okay? This part, the middle. Then you reduce the pressure quite quickly. And as you are reaching the middle between the A1 and the west, uh, so sorry, it's waistline, so the middle, then you start lifting, going upwards, finishing your small oval, and you will touch the top on the ascended to line. Then you come down, slowly adding more pressure, reduce pressure back to a thin hairline. Now the thickest part is in the center here. So it's gradation of thickness. The widest here in the center and back to thin. Okay, so that's the first indirect oval entry that you will come across and you will see in the X and the letter uh, Q. The Q that looks like a number two. The second option or second variation that you see for the indirect oval entry, again, you start with a thin hairline, meaning no pressure. And as I come down, I'll add pressure and quite quickly I reduce and it will touch the middle between the ascender one and the waistline. So this oval is smaller, okay? So this and this is, they are both smaller than a uh, letter P, uh, B and R. So maybe I'll find that page so you can have a quick comparison. I have it printed here as well. Okay, can you see the difference? So this one, it come down quite low, quite close to the waistline, instead of in the middle. Okay, so this is a larger oval. Same as the B. Okay, it will come down slightly above the waistline, but it wasn't in the middle. And same as the R, it will come down close to the waistline, okay? And if we look at the the group six that we're learning today, it's a little bit smaller. It will land on the middle, uh, the middle point between the ascender one and the waistline. All right, so we'll come up, relax, and it will touch the ascender two, and then you curve coming down on the 55 and add pressure, consistent pressure. That means once you add the pressure, you keep the same on your fingertip, don't let go. And when you hit, well, for the letter U, you keep going down, right? So this practice is just up to here. Okay, notice there's a little triangle as the spacing. Okay, now let's apply this to the X. Sorry, we should start with the Q, but actually in this group, um, I'm supposed to show you the X first. So let's use the X. So you have indirect oval, add pressure, reduce, come up, add pressure, keep going, the heaviest in the middle point, coming down, reduce the pressure, draw the ball shape terminal, this is the ball shape terminal that should be exactly the same as you have been writing, uh, like A, M, N, etc. And then you press in, the ink will fill in here. Now, the second part of your X is you start from the top. No pressure, because if you add pressure, the ink puddle will go crazy because this is still wet. You just literally touch the ink very lightly Coming up, relax, and make an oval. So notice this is an oval, and lift. Make sure the top is above the waistline. So it's kind of in the middle point, okay? If you wanna be easier to remember, you can put it in the middle between A1 and X, uh, the waistline. Then I will lift my pen. 
I'll make sure I have very light pressure because I'm gonna do the synthetic shade by adding on the right hand side of the oval and lift. Coming back here, retrace, so meaning that you retrace on this hairline, curling down, make a ball terminal. That should be the same size as the base, uh, the ball terminal on the baseline. Then you again press and the ink will fill in. Okay, so this is the letter X, how you do. Okay, I'm gonna um, use this sheet to show you things to pay attention. In fact, if you don't mind, I might save this um, onto my IGTV because I think in a minute they will, uh, I will disappear. <laughs> So I'll come back immediately. So please stay tuned if you want to do a quick summary with me. Okay. And if you have any questions, um, you can ask in the second part as well. Sorry, I hasn't been reading the messages. Okay. So I'll be back very soon. Thank you for supporting me. Thank you.